In order to understand three phase inverters, I have a simple single phase inverter constructed using mechanical switches. I have a 24 volt source, positive rail, negative rail. I have a, a load connected between points A1 and B1. And I have four mechanical switches that will control current flow through the load. Switch S1 and S4 are linked together and controlled by key A on my keyboard. Switches S3 and S2 are linked together and are controlled by key D on my keyboard. So let's have a look at the power flow and how we alternate current through the load using these switches. I'm going to close switch S1 and S4. And what happens, current flows from the battery source through S1, through the load, through S4, and back to the source. Okay, so that's your current flow in one direction. Now what we're going to do, we're going to open S1 and S4. We're going to close S2 and S3. And we're going to trace out the current flow now. Now current flows from the source. And it flows to S3. And current flows through the load in the opposite direction. It flows through S2 and back to the source. So in one direction, it flows from left to right. In the other direction, it flows from right to left. Keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up this oscilloscope and try to make an inverter happen with my keyboard here. And we'll see how it all works out. I'm going to open it up here. And we can see that we already have one switch on. Okay, so I'll close switch A. Or sorry, key A, which is uh, switch S1 and S4. And you can see that we're a positive alternation. I'll release that one and push switch. Sorry, key D, which is S2 and S3. Now we're negative. Now I'm going to try to make an inverter with my switches. Now it's very difficult to time it perfectly and what you have to realize is the simulation that I'm using does not happen in real time. So you can see I have a bit of an uneven inverter. I definitely have AC. One's positive, one's negative. One's positive, one's negative. But I couldn't imagine sitting here doing that all day. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use transistors and we're going to make it happen a lot quicker and a lot smoother. It's going to replicate the timing on this AC waveform. Plus, minus, plus, minus. What we need to do is we need to measure how long it takes for one of these waves for, waveforms to occur, starting, say, from this point to this point. In on oscilloscopes, we have what are called cursors for measuring time. So I'll take the red cursor where the waveform just starts at the zero line, and we will measure to where it, it starts again positive. So it's completed a whole cycle, and it's starting a fresh cycle. It takes 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And if you use a calculator, you can figure that out. If you're using 60 hertz power in North America, it happens 60 times a second. So if you want to know how long one of those takes, you take one second and you divide it into 60 pieces and you end up with decimal 01666 or 16 milliseconds. So one alternation takes 16 milliseconds. How long does it take to complete half an alternation? 
We'll need to know that. It takes, I'm going to divide one cycle by two. It takes 8.3 milliseconds or decimal 0083 seconds. Please remember that. We will need that information when we construct our uh, inverter using transistors, which we are going to do next.